everyone has drunk more mother's milk than the four oceans since worldlings follow after the common herd they will have to drink still more than this having enjoyed some of the pleasure of the existence you want more of it and are never satisfied everyone has been in the samsara since time immemorial and has drunk more mother's milk than the water in the four oceans now if you do not follow the path to liberation but continue to follow the ways of foolish common men bewildered by the darkness of ignorance then you will have to drink still more mother's milk in the future namaste to all these are some of the beautiful points which i read in one article in internet of course the author is not a vedic author but many points what he has written is matching with the vedas and this one what i just read is matching with the brahma sutras athato brahma jigyasa the author writes there are no certainties in this world everything in samsara is uncertain and impermanent in successive lifetimes your son may become your father and your father may become your son your enemies may become your friends and your friends may become your enemies therefore abandon aversion towards enemies and attachment towards friends do not make distinctions among among the living beings for at one moment a person may be a friend and the next he may become an enemy grieve over sansara which is the source of manifold suffering such as destitution of what is desired death disease old age etc and also listen to some of its faults remember the unsatisfactory nature of this world people suffer because they cannot get the things they want on the contrary all sorts of unwanted things happen to them even if people are lucky enough to enjoy a relatively happy life they will eventually have to part from the persons the things they love consequently suffering cannot in any case be avoided in this world therefore cultivate renunciation by meditating upon the unsatisfactory nature of this world oh what a beautiful point it's completely vedic having obtained a human birth one who commits unwholesome actions that means one who commits sins or one who commits anti vedic deeds is more foolish than one who fills a jewel adorned golden vase with vomit there is no greater fool than one who fails to take advantage of a human life to practice the vedic dharma and to strive for liberation i added the word vedic but he has just mentioned dharma really beautiful point it's like taking vomit in a golden vase <laughs> ah mind boggling who king the author is writing who king since everything is impermanent devoid of self that means everything is non alive refugeless protectorless and homeless free your mind from samsara which is like a pitless plantain tree just as your own body is impermanent so also the whole universe is impermanent the wheel of cyclical existence continually goes round and round without substance therefore resolve to renounce the this world i make videos mostly for myself i don't know if my videos are useful to you maybe for some of you it is useful but this video is definitely not for you it is for me but if you are able to gain some benefit it's good because i want to listen these kind of words on a daily basis that's why i want to record it the author says know that the insubstantial body at the end becoming ashes it dries or it is putrid or fouling will be completely destroyed and despoiled and its constituents dispersed remember that one day your own body will be buried burned or this embird or the like therefore there is no cause to be attached to this particular body life is impermanent since many misfortunes like a bubble of water caught by the wind that one inhales after exhaling and awakens from the sleep is wonderful 
recollect impermanence and the death in order to remain mindful attachment to one's life and body is inapp- inappropriate because life is impermanent and the body is insubstantial there are many internal and external factors which can cause death such as diseases disorders accidents and attacks from the enemies i think this is a letter written by somebody to a king so he is addressing that person as oh lord o oh king etc then the further point know that in reality human beings are unhappy impermanent and impure those who forsake mindfulness are ruined through wrongly viewing these three if you examine carefully the nature of human condition you will see that people are usually dissatisfied and discontented you will observe the following they are suffering the they are impermanent and they are impure if you think the opposite then you hold these are wrong therefore never allow mindfulness to leave the doorway of the mind if we should recollect and earnestly meditate upon these miseries of the states what i have told be aware that these five hindrances are thieves which steal the wealth of a virtue number 1 restlessness and worry number 2 aversion number 3 sloth and torpor number 4 attachment and number 5 doubt so the author writes restlessness and worry preoccupied with worldly matters one is distracted by the restlessness and worries aversion ill will towards one's enemies and distaste for the practice of dharma sloth and torpor means heaviness of the body and mind with no interest in virtue attachment lust and greed for material objects and sensory stimulation doubt vacillation of the mind and uncertainty regarding the law of karma these are the five hindrances upon the path of liberation of course patanjali muni spoke speak about 14 hindrances which i made a video separately you can go through that videos later on from the foundation of these five great factors persistence intention unopposed endowed with qualities and beneficiaries virtuous and non virtuous deeds arise therefore strive always to do virtuous actions so he speaks about five conditions number one persistence says actions done repeatedly over a long period of time satu dirga kalena antara what patanjali muni says that we must try to do the tapasya for dirga kal persistently then the point number 2 is intention actions done with great will or determination number 3 unopposed that means actions done without any hesitation doubt or regret that means we don't see here and there before doing an action when we are seeing here and there and then do a deed that means it's a wrong deed number 4 endowed with qualities means actions done for the persons or things endowed with special qualities such as for an acharya etc number 5 beneficiaries actions done for benefactors such as parents and religious preachers actions done modified by any or all of these five conditions are the foundation of the accumulation of the virtue and non virtue in the great measure i think you must listen this again to understand better the next point is always meditate upon these things rightly love compassion joy and equanimity even if the supreme state is not gained in this way still the happiness of the, of the world will be attained the limitless or immeasurable meditations include the following number 1 love the wish for all sentient beings to be happy and to have the cause of happiness number 2 compassion the wish for all sentient beings to be free from suffering and the cause of suffering Number 3 joy the wish for all sentient beings to experience the joy that is free from sorrow number 4 equanimity the wish that all the sentient beings dwell in equanimity free from attachment towards near ones and aversion towards far the cause of happiness and suffering are wholesome and unwholesome actions respectively wholesome means right unwholesome means wrong actions that we must understand and for the author says o oh, righteous king after usefully spending the whole day and and the beginning and in the end of the night mindfully sleep only in the middle of the night 
so that means he's indicating time between 10:30 to 4 a.m. to sleep with a great revulsion for samsara strive constantly for enlightenment waste neither day nor night but use all of your time for practicing the path that leads to liber- liberation sleep in the middle of the night with the thought of making the sleep two part of the path my acharya always says even when sleeping before sleeping when you remember almighty god's name and when you fall asleep and when you wake up in the early morning again with the name of the god in the mind that means your sleep also is counted as meditation by almighty god what a beautiful point here also but the author says he says the next point understand food to be like a medicine neither use it with hatredness nor with attachment nor for might nor for pride nor for beauty but solely for maintaining the body keep in mind that food is only medicine for the illness of hunger always eat moderately avoid eating with attachment or aversion towards the food eat simply for the purpose of sustaining your body so as to be able to practice the dharma what a beautiful point the next point the author says abandon these six which results in the loss of fame and birth in the evil states that is gambling participation in fairs laziness association with sinful friends alcoholism and walking in the night actually walking in the night very important point my acharya always says that it is always good to stay at home after the evening time try to be in meditative state and try to spend your time alone uh, before going to bed you need not walk or roam around in the night if you walk and roam around the night you might have problems like you know attack from thieves or attack from animals which are hiding somewhere so that's a very good point these are six points which might result in the loss of fame that's what the author says so drinking alcohol we know association with non virtuous friends we know laziness of course one who is lazy will never get fame and attendance at fairs this is not fair means like in those days i think this is a old letter so in those days fairs means those places where you know the women are standing with the liquor in the hand they are asked they are calling you for uh, you know i am a prostitute you can come pay money and then enjoy my body this is the fairs i think he is speaking about really good point the next point o king these are the eight worldly dharmas gain loss happiness unhappiness fame notoriety praise and blame please regard these equally as they are not worthy of your mind so that means he is trying to give the knowledge of sri krishna here that be equally equal in all this situation because he says gain happiness fame and praise by getting these things people normally become overjoyed and by getting loss suffering notoriety and blame people normally fear these four things so you try to be equal in these eight things is what this author is saying the person possessing high caste beautiful form and learning is not respected if he lacks wisdom and morality however one who possesses wisdom and morality even though lacking the other qualities is worshipable what a beautiful point the next point author says he says o king look upon the body of a young woman apart from ornaments and clothing like a totally impure vessel if you are a women listener please don't get disheartened this is an advice to a male king and if you are a like if the advice is given to a female queen then it will be like instead of women it will be men because men and women are bodies and he says the body is totally like a impure vessel covered with skin and body is difficult to get satisfy and body is bad smelling and with impurities issuing from the nine bodily doors navadwaram pundarikam says atharveda so it's whether it is a male body or a female body we can never satisfy the desire of the body and of course the body is absolutely impure it is like a impure vessel it is bad smelling it contains mal mutra inside it so that is what the author is trying to say in choosing between the two 
the one who conquers the attachment to the ever unsteady and the momentary objects of the sixth sense six sense means five sense organs and the mind is the sixth and the one who conquers the enemy's army in the battle the wise know that the first to be the far greater hero that means the person who conquers his attachment to the six organs that means he is not attached to any of the bodily organs he is far greater hero than the other person who conquers the enemy's battle because this advice is given to the king very beautiful point the next point protect the unsteady mind just as you would protect the learnings just as you would protect your son just as you would protect your treasure just as you would protect your own life withdraw the mind from sensual pleasures just as you would withdraw from a vicious serpent from a poison from a weapon or from an enemy or a fire your mind is most valuable thing you possess o king the mind can make you happy or miserable according to how you treat it if you own a valuable house a car or a painting you would take good care of it and do your best to keep it away from being damaged if you have children you know how careful you are to protect them and keep them away from any harms the same applies to your mind also therefore take good care of your mind and do not let it get entangled in harmful distractions and unwholesome deeds what a beautiful point and he says o king do not ever look upon another person's wife however should you see her think of her according to her age thus like a mother a daughter or a sister if your lust still persists then meditate well on the impurity of the body which i spoke about earlier what a beautiful point he says control the afflictions by being watchful of your mind don't hanker after others wives remember the evil consequences of desire in this life and the next lives overcome desire for the wives of others by regarding them according to their age as a mother as a daughter or as a sister meditate upon the impermanence and the impurity of the body if you are still unable to abandon the lust for the other's wife this is a very very good advice to the king because you know i have seen so many instances in uh, tamil nadu politics where the earlier politicians they used to pick up any girl who appeared beautiful to them the next point the author writes look upon these as enemies miserliness cunning deceit attachment to property laziness pride sexual attachment hatredness and arrogance of caste form learning youth and great power so this person says avoid this 13 faults of character that diminish your moral worth and are unbecoming although they apparently serve your own purpose they are in fact inimical to your real interest of moksha and last point he says forsake killing theft sexual misconduct forsake lying forsake alcohol and forsake attachment to food at improper times and forsake enjoyment of high seats and beds and o king forsake all kinds of songs and dances and garlands so i think these are extremely beautiful advice it is really helping me and i thought of making a short audio so that i can revise it at a later point of time i will try to make more videos if i find more you know good articles in the internet thank you so much namaste om